Hello and welcome back to the channel. In the previous lecture, we have seen all about the Neo 4G subqueries, which was a bit of an advanced part of the cipher. But let's stick to basics and first learn about what are the different patterns of cipher and how we can utilize it to fetch the required data or the required pattern from our graph database. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first question that comes into your mind is what really is a pattern? We were just working with the cipher queries, but pattern is like the most basic building block of the cipher query. So the graph pattern matching sits at the very core of the cipher. So as I already told you, it's the base of every cipher query. So it is like nothing but a mechanism which is used for navigating as well as extracting the data from graph with applying some declarative patterns. So your database could have like hundreds of different labels as well as so many relationships between them. But to get you the required results from your data, you need the right cipher pattern to be able to filter out that data and get those pattern as an output in the Neo4j desktop. So the graph pattern will describe the data using a syntax which can you can relate it to what we can draw on a whiteboard. So how the nodes and relationships are represented on a whiteboard and how we have created the ontology we have already seen in our basic tutorials. Let me show you how the graph on the whiteboard will convert into a cipher pattern. So let's say we have a customer graph. So in the customer graph we have different set of nodes related to the customer and their PI information which includes its location of the customer then it has the IP address as well as the contact and the email information. So let's say at the very core we have our customer node. So this node has a label of customer and through customer we will be having like different PI values. So let's say we have the location of the customer as well as the different PI values. But here as you can see we have represented a simple set of information in the form of the graph. So basically the graph is nothing but this we can call it as a node and node can have different properties. So properties you already know that they are nothing but a set of key value pairs which are tied to a particular node and in RDBMS it is also known as a record or the row in the table. But in graph databases or we can say Neo4j we are considering the properties as a single record as well as the node or we can say the label on that node which is nothing but the customer with nothing but the table name here if you compare it to the RDBMS table. So let's say here we are representing the node in a circle as well as the relationship as an arrow which defines the relationship. So here as you can see we can call it as a has location because it will make more sense calling it has location. So here as you can see we got the flow from customer has location as well as the location which has set of properties. So this pattern we can easily represent it in the cipher query. So let's say for this example in the nodes we can denote the certain label inside the brackets. So the opening and closing brackets will represent a node and after that you can define the relationship type. So here has location is our relationship type which will go into the square brackets and after that you will give the direction to the node which is the destination node which is location here which is represented again as a opening and closing brackets. So here you can define the label. So if we convert it into a cipher query it will be like the customer node which has the customer label. So here will be the label then we have has location and after that we have the direction and with the destination of our pattern will be the location. So this we have converted into a simple cipher query. Let's talk about it in more detail. Okay so now let's start with the node patterns as well as the simple relationship patterns and also their complexities. So here I hope you already have Neo4j desktop installed so I will recommend you to just kick it off and also load any of their existing projects. So I have already set up the recommendation project which we have also seen in the previous lecture. So the first step is you to have a pattern using the match clause. 
so it is not necessary that you can only mention the pattern in the match clause you can also write it in the in the sub queries itself that we have seen already in the previous lecture so the first thing is you have to provide a match to get fetch the data from any database it is just like the from clause where you are defining from which table you are pulling the data as well as all the joins to that table using some keys so basically here we are defining which labels we need from our graph or which pattern so for mentioning the node patterns as we have already seen that it is like opening and closing round brackets so basically this will define as a node so if we just return this it is it will pull the data from the entire database because we haven't mentioned any of the label so it will scan the whole database and give us the output but to obtain any reference to the declared node we can give a variable inside this so basically if we let's say give the n it will still fetch the whole data from the graph but you can use that as a reference and utilize that variable in the subsequent logic so basically if we use the match n we already know that return will return all the data from our database which is nothing but a select clause if we compare it to the relational databases so if you return just everything and maybe just give a limit because it will make more sense because it already has a 28000 nodes so i'll just limit it to the 100 and as you can see there are all sorts of labels that have appeared we got the genre node as well as the movie node because we haven't declared any label on top of it so the next step of the pattern matching is defining a label so let's say if you only want to fetch a certain record from the database the first step is defining the label so here we have given the variable for defining the label you will give the colon and the label name so the label is nothing but actor director so for example we want to fetch only the actors from our cipher query so we'll just filter it out using a label so if we return this we will get all the actor nodes this so this is nothing but a node pattern let's talk about a more complex pattern so let's say if you want to fetch the node which has either the actor or the director label you can also do that using the or operator so for defining the or you can use the pipe symbol here so i have given the pipe symbol and you can give another label so the another label maybe it is like director so it will fetch for all the records which has either the actor or the director label from it so if you return this you will get actor as well as few directors as well so as you can see this label this record already has actor director as well as the person label so this is all about the or but what about the and so let's filter out some records where we have a record where it is present as a actor as well as the director so there comes the and operator in picture instead of or you can use directly the and symbol here so i have given the and so it will look out for all the labels which has actor as well as the director label so if you return this as you can see all these records have the actor as well as director present on it and also you can make a complex pattern as well so let's say it should have an actor and director or else it could be a person so those you can mention it in brackets so let's say this is the bracket and here you can mention like or maybe not person but movie let's say so this is a pretty odd pattern so here you are fetching all the records where either it should be actor and director or else it could be also a movie label so if you just return this you got all the records which are like movie here but it will also look out for the pattern where we have the actor and director label as well so this is how you can give a complex pattern in your cipher query so this is just a basic example let's say if you want to fetch only a particular actor from the database you can mention that in the pattern itself so how to do that let's talk about it so let's say we got an actor here but let's say if you want to fetch only the actor which has the name Wallace Berry so I'll just copy this and here you can mention that inside the curly brackets here so for defining or maybe applying a filter on some property you can mention that inside the curly brackets so here in the label itself I will give the empty curly brackets and here 
you have to pass the key and the value of that property the key would be like the name as given here and colon and again in quotes you have to give the property so it totally depends on the data type your property has so as you can see in the name we have the string property that's why we have given the quotations we are going to see in detail how this data types work so here i'll just copy the wallace berry so it will only look out for the actor whose name is wallace berry in our database so if i just return this as you can see it only fetch that record which has the wallace berry but let's say if you only want to match a particular pattern so you don't have a full name of that actor for example you only have the wallace or maybe the berry so i'll just remove that and if we just return this we don't have any record because it will look out for the exact pattern so there comes you can use the contains operator which is also similar to the like operator in sql so how to do that you can directly give it in the pattern itself so you can also give the where condition itself in the match clause or you in your pattern so here you can maybe mention the where clause and where n dot so for fetching a certain property in the where clause you have to mention it as the variable name dot the property name so here we have the n as a variable to our actor node and dot the property name is n dot name and here we will use the contains and then we will use like wallace so here it should give us all the actors whose whose name contains wallace so if we just run this we got the records so here there are so many persons that has wallace in their in their name so as you can see we got the jack wallace we got the wallace wood we got like the wallace berry which we fetched earlier so this is how you can mention the node patterns let's talk about the relationship patterns as well it is similar to the same thing so let's talk about it now so as you already know that relationships are defined in the square brackets and the rules which used to define a pattern is similar to as we have come as we have seen in the node patterns so here we will be having the match clause usually we will define a pattern in the match clause so here the match and then we got the label of course or we can say the node and in square brackets here comes the relationship in picture and after that it will be having some direction and then it got the empty node so here we haven't defined any relationship type so it will return the whole thing again but if you want to add a reference point or maybe you want to apply some filter or the logic in the subsequent step of your cipher query you can do that using a variable similar to the node variable so similarly we can define it we have the variable name colon as well as the relationship type so as you can see we got the acted in directed in genre and the rated relationships here so let's say we got the rated relationships here and we can maybe and we can just return it using the all operator here so if, so if we just return this we will get like all the relationships here because so we have got the tabular output because we haven't defined any reference point to our labels let's add some variables and let's see how it looks like so basically we'll give like a and b whatever it is and we are returning all so it will also return the labels alongside the relationship so i'll just return this now and we got a graph here so as you can see we got the graph as the user we have which is rated to a particular movie and in here in relationship type as we already know that relationships can also have the set of properties which are nothing but a key value pairs similar to the node properties so if you want to only fetch few records you can apply like relationship filters as well or the relationship pattern as well so to able to do that either you can do it in the where clause but you can also mention it in the cipher query or the cipher or the relationship pattern itself so let's say in the curly brackets the rules will be the same you have to mention any property on in the curly bracket here so let's say if you only want to get the relations where the rating is equal to 3.5 you can mention that you can just simply give like a rating colon 
3.5 so here i have given i have not given the string because our rating property is present as a flow so if we just return this it will only give us the result where user has rated to a particular movie to a 3.5 rating it is so simple to use but let's say if you want to apply the ranges as well you can do that as well similar to what we have seen in the node patterns so basically if you want to only get the ratings which are like below 3 that you can do that here you can directly call it as where r dot ratings which is like less than 3 this is so simple so here we only got a cluster where the rating is less than 3 so this is how you can mention like some complex patterns as well in your relationship so this is all about it let's talk about the data types as well as the values in cypher query so i'll see you in the next one